Hello and welcome to another video. Today we'll be reviewing these acrylic markers that RTX sent me and by the color swatches on the back of the box they seem very saturated so I'm quite excited to see how they'll go. So yes let's just have fun in the sketchbook nothing too serious but let's try these colors out. You can see that they have the codes um, on the lid, which is perfect. And you can also see through the middle, there's like a transparent bit, which you can actually see how much of the paint is left inside. And then there's a protector cap because for these acrylic markers, you're supposed to press on that button at the end for the acrylic ink to come out. So they gave these caps just to protect it. So extra ink doesn't come out just in case. So what you're supposed to do is shake it for a few seconds and then press this button at the top and the acrylic paint will, the acrylic marker paint will come out. And I'm just doing these swatches first. I'm going to be following all the swatches because I want to compare my swatches to the ones that came with the box. Let me show you really quick how to use these acrylic markers. If it's the first time you're using them, you're going to want to shake them for like 20 to 30 seconds. And then at the end, there's like this button and you're supposed to press it. The first time you're going to have to press it like four to five times. So the acrylic paint inside starts to come out. Um, I found that once this process has already been done throughout all the markers later on, it's much easier and quicker, which was nice. <laughs> but to start off these swatches, I had to do this with every single um, acrylic marker. And I'm doing that while I'm actually doing the swatches because I really do want to compare the swatches that are in my sketchbook compared to the ones at the back of the box that they came in. But so far I am seeing that they are really saturated and I really like that because my art is very bold and colorful. So I'm absolutely happy with these right now. Um, some do come out a bit dry, but I think that's my fault because I wasn't patient enough and I had to shake them a bit extra and press the button a bit extra. It's the first time I'm using them, so I, I assume that's normal. And when I'm trying out new materials, I always like to do swatches because I use them as reference whenever I'm painting because I like to go back and see which exact color I want to use. So swatches are super helpful. I'm actually adding underneath each color the code that's on the lid of the acrylic marker because then it's like easy to find as well. And one thing I did find about these acrylic markers is that the lid that's at the back or at the top, at the bottom actually, to be safety for the button to press the acrylic in out. So that lid keeps on falling off, like it falls off when I shake or when I like um, put it back in the box or something, it, it, it falls off easily. And I personally think I'm going to keep them without the lid because I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be putting them in any dangerous situation where they'll accidentally press themselves. If you're someone who likes to travel and take your acrylic um, markers with you and pencils and stuff, and you keep them like a bit more rough, I would suggest trying to keep the lids on. But in my case, I don't think it's necessary. So for me, it's not a big issue, honestly. And yes, so now that I've tested them out, let's go into painting mode. So the first thing I am thinking I'm going to do is actually test out a bit more these acrylic markers. So I'm just going to put a layer of gouache paint and I'm going to just do with one color a doodle on top. And I think today's theme, I'm going to be sticking with flowers and trees and vases and just like more natural stuff because I feel comfortable drawing them and somehow I don't feel pressure when I draw these because it's just fun for me. So I think I'm going to be sticking with this theme. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm just going to try with one color because I want to get used to using these acrylic markers and I want to see if they're good or not for like painting larger things. And so far, I think they're nice. I think they're good. I think the amount of acrylic that comes out is like icing sugar on a cake. When you have icing that is like the perfect consistency that it it droops but not too much but it's not too stiff and I know this might not be a good comparison but I just when I like paints and I think the paints are great and in this case acrylic markers I usually compare it to yummy food I don't know why I just feel like colors sometimes are yummy so for me these acrylic markers are starting to be yummy <laughs> 
I am starting to get ready for October. As most of you know on Instagram, there's lots of art challenges happening in October. And I think I'm going to be participating this year. I found one that has like lots of quirky and fun characters. So I think I'm just going to like have fun. I'm not sure if I can fully complete October's art challenge. I have never completed a full one because I'm usually super busy. But I'm just going to aim for the prompts that inspire me the most. And what I'm going to do to like set myself some kind of goal is I'm going to make borders for every single illustration I'm going to make this October. So here I am, you can see me practicing a really little bit of borders. They don't have to be overcomplicated borders. They can just be really simple, but I think it's going to frame the artwork a bit more. So I'm going to try that out. And another thing I also want to try this October is experimenting a bit more with my color palettes. So I use very bold color palettes, but somehow I always tend to go towards the more primary colors. And I just feel very attracted to them. I like the bright yellows and the pinks. But somehow I always go back to the primaries. And at the same time, I don't want to feel safe always using primary colors or the more basic colors I want to experiment a bit more I'm not a person that will use muted colors because it just doesn't go with my art style so I'm not going to be using those but I can still experiment a lot and have fun and I'm going to try and be a bit more bold I might add a bit more black than I usually usually do I usually avoid black because I want things to be very happy but I don't know I think I'm going to go for it and just try it out a little bit which, by the way, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to see the illustrations I'm going to be doing. And if not, I'm always going to be sharing some insights on my Patreon. And by the way, talking about Patreon, thank you for my supporters because thanks to you, I can continue dedicating time to do YouTube videos as well. We actually do creative workshops every single month and they're fun they're all about creating picture books because I'm a children's illustrator and author, so <laughs> I like those topics. But we do two workshops for illustrators and two workshops for authors every single month. And they're live, so you just come to the session and chit-chat and hopefully get to meet other people. And I'm very excited about Patreon. I just launched it last month, so it's still brand new. But I'm very excited about it and I'm excited to start sharing my knowledge with people because I feel like I'm gaining experience. I'm not a complete pro compared to others, but I feel like I'm gaining experience and knowledge that I really want to start sharing to others. So I'm going to use Patreon for that and the workshops are helpful for me, are helpful for you. So I don't know. It's a win-win. And going back to my sketchbook now, I'm actually very happy with the spread. It's coming out very minimal, but I'm very much enjoying it. The acrylic markers are coming out beautifully. It's extremely vibrant and saturated, which I love. And keeping it just like one tone, one color. I don't know. I really like it. Well, one color, sorry, with the pink underneath. I really like it. I'm really loving the spread of the sketchbook. I am curious to see if they will layer well on top of each other, which I'll probably try in the next page because I want to see, I like layering lots of my colors and if I'm going to use them like I use my pencils, there's going to be lots of colors mixed up one on top of the other. So I think I'm going to draw a tree after this one with lots and lots of colors layering on top to see how that goes. But so far I am super happy. So some of you know that I live near Barcelona. I actually live on the Mediterranean coast. I do miss New Zealand quite a lot, but it's nice here as well. The weather is so nice. And not far from the studio, there's actually some fields. And there's a walk that I take with Kiwi sometimes. And at the end, near reaching the end of the field, after like one hour walk, you find just two solitary eucalyptus trees. And I love going there. I don't know why, I love the smell of eucalyptus trees and I just find them so beautiful. And once I went at night time and it had all the stars behind it and I just thought the eucalyptus tree looked gorgeous. And the thing about like about the eucalyptus tree is maybe the colour. I feel like the colour stands out much more against the Mediterranean trees and they're so much more taller. And I don't know, I really like the colour of the bark and I just, I found like my spot, you know. And I can't wait to actually take my sketchbook and go there and just sit there for a while and just draw outside. I haven't done it yet. Um, I have no excuse. <laughs> I just haven't done it. So the layering of these acrylic markers was wonderful. 
I usually layer my colored pencils. I'm sure you've seen other sketchbook illustrations of mine that I do lots of trees like this and I just like add lots and lots of color to them and lots of colored pencils. So I wanted to use like the, the exact same way I use my colored pencils but these with these acrylic markers and that meant that I was layering a lot of um, lines on top of each other, a lot of paint on top of each other. I think it held up very well. I, there's no color, like sometimes I put a lighter one on top of a darker one and you could kind of see the darker one come through, but I'm actually very happy. I love having imperfections in my art and this is what I like. This is what I go for. And now you're going to be seeing me drawing a couple of vases. And with this spread, I actually wanted to try what it was like using these acrylic markers to paint like a larger spread. So I'm going to be painting the whole background. I'm someone that loves drawing plants and I love drawing flowers in vases. But my plants at home don't go very well. <laughs> I try my best. I really do. I water them the necessary, but not too much. But the, the problem with where we live is that the summer gets so hot. So if the plants survive and thrive during winter, no problem at all. But then summer comes along and it's just too hot and everything goes drowsy. And you can move them from one end of the house to the other, but it's just everything gets hot. So lots of times I get a plant and I actually think this time it's going to survive the summer and most times it doesn't. I actually use lots of local plants for my tiny balcony and not even those ones survive, maybe because they're like in a, bal in a balcony. I don't know, just nothing really goes here. And I'm not the only one. Turns out lots of plants of all my neighbors um, have these problems as well, especially if your house is facing towards the sea and the sun. My parents, for example, have like this mini garden that is sheltered from the elements and they have so many tropical plants. It's beautiful. And I'm finding that some other neighbors also have like this little sheltered area and they can grow tropical plants because they thrive in those closed areas, but the humidity that we have here. But if your house doesn't have this kind of enclosed area like my, like mine doesn't, we can't really keep plants. We can keep cacti. I don't have cacti because Kiwi's poked his nose several times with cacti. Kiwi's my dog. I don't know why he keeps on doing that. He goes to cacti and he always pokes his nose. And you'd, th you'd figure he would learn by now, but he just keeps on doing it. So I have no cacti at home. My husband does, however, buy me beautiful flowers from time to time. And I'm so happy. He brings me different kind of bouquets with different flowers and I usually paint them because I don't know I'm just really happy that he brings me flowers not super often but like when when he feels like I'm feeling a bit down or it's been a bit too long since I've had flowers he always brings me some which by the way completely changing topics if you are still watching and you like reading I would love love for book recommendations so I read kind of anything I read from fantasy science fiction to day-to-day -day stuff I don't really read autobiographies but the rest give me whatever I'm looking for something that will actually hook me so I find it quite difficult to get hooked onto books but once I'm hooked I will swallow the book down like I will swallow it so I'm kind of looking for something if it's like more than one if it's a series I'm looking for juicy good series it can be of anything it could be like a murder thing if you want but if you have any book recommendation that you say hey this book changed my life in some way it made you cry I can cry for books don't worry I'm happy with the books that make me cry just give me something that will make me feel hooked if you have any so let me know in the comments and I will let you know if I read them. Going back to the acrylic markers, okay. <laughs> I can see that my paper peels a little bit, but not too bad. Um, I feel, I think that once it dries, you can just like um, brush it off and that's it. Um, it's not a massive deal. Um, it's not annoying me. You can just paint on top again. Like, I don't know. It's not super peeling. I'm not even sure if you can actually see it on the camera. Because it's, it's really not there. But I do feel like I have to just say it out to you guys. My sketchbook, the paper's quite thick. I can't remember right now. I think it was 140. 
but I'm not completely sure, but I do think it's that. So my paper is quite thick. My sketchbook is for all kind of art materials and for resisting water as well, because I like mixed media and lots of times I use gouache or watercolors. So I do use these kind of thicker sketchbook pages and it is flat. So maybe that's a reason why a paper isn't peeling. Maybe if you use a thinner paper, it will peel a bit more just to keep that in mind. But it does cover the larger areas very nicely but I think it goes down really nicely and the result of my like the three spreads we did now are so vibrant and colorful and I really like that anyway so that's it for now I'll see you next time bye